Hello everyone. Our today's topic is adaptation in plants. Plants are found everywhere on the earth. However, the living conditions on all the parts of our planet are not the same. Some places get heavy rainfall and some places are extremely cold and some places are extremely hot and some places are always covered with ice. So plants develop some special features in order to adjust with their surroundings. This ability to adjust with their surroundings is called adaptation. The ability to adjust with their immediate surroundings is called adaptation. And the place where a plant or an animal lives is called its habitat. Based on their habitats, plants are broadly classified into two groups. They are the terrestrial plants and aquatic plants. Do you remember our earlier class? Terra is the Latin name for land or earth, whereas aqua is the Latin name for water. Terrestrial habitats can be hills and mountains, plains, marshy areas and deserts. Let us look at few examples. So the trees that grow on hills and mountains are cedars, spruce, fir, pine, etc. And next comes the trees that grow on plains. Bunyan, people, mango, sol. All these are the examples that grow on plains. Next comes the marshy areas. So rhizophora is the common example of a plant that grows in marshy areas. And coming to the plants that grow in deserts, cactus and bubble are the trees that grow in deserts. Based on the aquatic habitats, the plants are of three groups. The first one are free floating plants. Examples, water hyacinth and duckweed. Coming to the second category, they are the fixed floating plants. Examples, lotus, water lily. And coming to the third one, they are the submerged plants. Examples, hydrilla, tape grass. Let us pick one example from each group to learn their special features. First, let us learn the adaptations in plants growing on hills and mountains. Let us have a look at it. These trees are usually conical in shape and hence they are also called as conifers. They are conical in shape and they have a very thick bark. So this thick bark protects against extreme cold. They have shorter stems to avoid harsh winds so that they do not get knocked out. They have shorter stems and coming to the leaves, they have needle-like leaves so that the rainwater and snow slides off easily. Hills and mountains are the places where they get heavy rains and snowfall. So these needle-like leaves help in sliding off the snow and rainwater easily. These trees, they bear cones instead of flowers so that they protect the seeds inside the cones. All these are the special features observed in the trees growing on hills and mountains. Now let us learn the adaptations in plants growing on plains. So what are the examples? Mango, people, bunion, sol, all these are the examples of trees that grow on plains. So the trees that grow on plains, they are big in size with many branches. These trees 
they have very big and broad leaves so that they lose the excess water these trees they shed their leaves to survive the harsh weather they lose their leaves in winter and grow back again in spring hence these trees are also called as deciduous trees now we are going to learn adaptations in plants that grow in marshy areas what are marshy areas the wetlands that are covered with water for a long period of time are called as marshy areas due to that reason the soil here is very sticky and clayey with very little oxygen and very less nutrients the trees that grow in marshy areas are called as mangroves or halophytes trees that grow in marshy areas are called as mangroves or halophytes rhizophora is a common mangrove plant coming to the special features they have sticky and clayey soil with very little oxygen so these trees they develop some special roots these roots they grow in upward direction in order to absorb the air that is the reason these roots are also called as aerial roots breathing roots or respiratory roots they are also called as knee roots as they give some additional support to the plant they are also called as knee roots breathing roots respiratory roots or the aerial roots and coming to the leaves the leaves are oblong or oval shape so that they share an affinity with the brackish waters they share an affinity with the salt waters these are all the special features observed in trees that grow in marshy areas now we are going to learn adaptations in plants that grow in deserts let us have a look at the special features these trees are usually short in size with fewer branches and leaves they are short in size with few branches and leaves and coming to the stem the stem is flat and thick as it stores water inside do you remember a camel a desert animal which stores water and food in its body in the same way even a cactus plant which grows in deserts store water inside its stem and coming to the leaves the leaves are reduced into spines or scales in order to store the water these spines they help in not to lose the water that is stored inside the stem the waxy coating on the plant keeps the plant cool and avoids the water loss these desert plants they do not make much food therefore they do not need much of water and the long roots they grow extremely deep into the soil in search of water these roots they have numerous root hairs in order to absorb the water whenever it rains these root hairs they absorb the water even before it evaporates these are all the special features observed in a plant that grows in deserts now we are going to learn the adaptations in plants that are free floating these plants they freely float on the water the roots do not reach the soil or the water bed they are freely floating on the water so they they are light in weight and spongy in nature they are light in weight and spongy in nature and coming to the cells there are some air filled spaces in between the cells present inside the plant there are some air filled spaces in between the cells present inside the plant and the roots are feathery and light in weight which also helps the plant to float freely on the water the leaves have a 
Waxy coating. This waxy coating on the leaves help the plant not to get rotten. All these are the special features observed in a free floating plant. Now we are going to learn adaptations in fixed floating plants. Let us have a look at it. These are the fixed floating plants where the lotus and water lily are the examples. As the name itself tells us, the roots are very long and they are fixed into the soil. The roots are very long and are rooted into the water bed. Hence they are called as fixed floating plants. So, what is the feature that is helping the plant to float on the surface? They have hollow stems filled with air inside and the leaves are very broad and they are floating on the surface in order to capture the sun rays. They have many pores on the upper surface which help in breathing and the leaves have waxy coating which helps the plant from rotting and this waxy coating does not allow the water to enter inside the leaf ensuring the plant that do not sink into the water. The leaves are light in weight and are very fluffy. All these are the special features observed in a fixed floating plant. Now we are going to learn adaptations in submerged plants. These plants grow completely under water. The roots are just rooted into the soil on the water bed. They are underwater plants. The leaves are long and tapered that offer least resistance to the flowing water. Tapered in the sense where the tip of the leaf becomes gradually thin. And these leaves, they do not have stomata. The plant body is going to help in breathing. The body of the plant helps in breathing. They take in carbon dioxide that is dissolved in the water and gives out oxygen. This oxygen is needed for the fish around. That is the reason these plants are usually grown in aquariums. Finely dissected leaves are also common in submerged plants. All these are the special features observed in submerged plants. All these are the special features or the adaptations observed in terrestrial plants and aquatic plants.